Is your roller door as noisy as this one? Well, today we've got some roller door maintenance tips that will get your door running as quiet as a new one. And these aren't just DIY tips, these are professional roller door servicing tips with guaranteed results. And the best thing is, it's all easily done at home with basic tools. Almost all noises come from inside of the roll. So today we're going to show you what makes the noise, what products you can use to get rid of the noise, and how to access the components that make the noise. Today we're focusing on the noisiest part of the roller door, the torsion springs. The first thing to do is to mark out and remove both guide tracks. This will ensure that they go back exactly how they came off. Simply place a small mark on the wall next to both tracks and you'll know exactly where they need to go when you're ready to replace them. The next thing we're going to do is remove the tracks by taking out all the fixing bolts that secure the tracks to the wall. In this instance, I have 13mm coach bolts in plastic plugs into a brick wall, so I'm using a 13mm long socket with my Makita impact driver. You might have tech screws or timber screws or diner bolts if your track's welded to the post. Yeah, good luck. So the tracks can be removed with the door closed or open. It is a bit easier to do it with the door open as you don't have as much curtain inside the track, but either way is fine. Now if your motor was installed correctly, you will have some security pinning screws in the top sheet of the roller door. If you stop the door approximately 60 centimeters from the floor, you will find the last pinning screw on each side. Remove this and then we can access the inside of the door. When in use, a security screw will fix the sheet to the drum wheel so nobody can lift it up from the outside. If pinning screws are not fitted to your door, somebody can easily lift it up about this high and climb under into your garage. Okay, now the pinning screws are out, we're just going to put the door into manual so it can be unrolled. On this door, there's approximately one meter of curtain that will need to be unrolled so we can access the internal springs. Now just pull the curtain down far enough until the springs are visible. In this case, I'm just using the motor's manual release mechanism to lock the door back into position. If your door doesn't have a motor, you might need a friend to help you hold the door in position. As you can see, we can now access the noisy springs. But first, let's take a quick tour of our magic product. It's HHS 2000 by Worth. It's a high pressure resistant, highly adhesive synthetic lubricating oil. It also comes in a 700ml forklift grease pack. This is for warehouse use, but it's exactly the same HHS 2000 product. We've tried 15 different products for garage door noise, and the Worth HHS 2000 is the only product we find that works the best. As you can see, the spray exits the can as a very thin solvent, so it penetrates really well, but the solvent rapidly evaporates, leaving behind a highly adhesive fluid grease, it doesn't even compare to WD-40, which doesn't have any grease or adhesive components in it. So this is a far, far superior product, and we highly recommend the HHS 2000. Now generously coat the springs in HHS 2000. It's vital in making sure to penetrate through the springs onto the main inner shaft, because this is where the springs rub and make all their noise. As you can see, even after applying a generous amount, the HHS 2000 does not drip, and it will not drip ever. It's highly adhesive, even though it goes on extremely, uh, extremely thin, and then evaporates and thickens up. It doesn't drip even as you apply it. It's fantastic stuff. 
What we're looking at here is all the old factory applied grease. It's just a basic multi-purpose grease that they mush into the spring and it's obviously hardened up and not doing its job anymore. It doesn't really even get applied to the shaft so it never really done its job in the first place. So that's why we're using a penetrative oil grease substance that gets through the spring onto the shaft and sets and makes a coating between the shaft and the spring itself which stops all the noise. How the roller door works is the spring is attached on one end to the drum wheel and on the other end of the spring it's bolted to the shaft. The shaft is a stationary object and the spring spin spins around with the drum wheel creating a rubber band torsion type effect which helps the door open up assisted without too much effort at all. So we're just applying the lubricant HHS 2000 to the other spring, obviously penetrating through the spring onto the shaft for maximum effect. And while we're up here, we're going to spray some into the, the curtain retainers, which hold the curtain level, but this also spins around the shaft, creating a little bit of friction, a minor noise, but nothing too major. But this will help the door run really smoothly also we're going to apply some in between the shaft and the drum wheel because there's no bearing, the drum wheel just spins around on the shaft uh, with the nylon create, creating some friction as well. Okay, we're just going to unlock the manual release on the garage door. The curtain will spin itself up off the ground. You may find that the door hasn't quite aligned itself with the top roll and the bottom sheet. So that's easy to fix. Just grab the opposite end and just pull it over to the side where the sheet has to line up with the top roll. As you can see, without the tracks on the door, it's quite easy to get level and align properly. The door is still noisy. Now it's okay, once the door has opened and closed a few times, all noise will disappear, just like magic. Just have to wait for the HHS to spin around inside the springs a bit, and we'll be all good at the end. So now we're just going to put those security pinning screws back into the same holes in the sheet. It's quite an easy job, just grab your screwdriver or drill and pop them back in. While we've got the tracks off, we're just going to check the corner guide rollers in this door. These are glider roll guide roller wheels. This one is completely worn out. We'll just pop him out and have a look. Yep, the shaft or axle has completely worn down to a toothpick. So we will just flick this one away and swap it for a new one. Bump. And look at that axle, it's nice and fat and it will clip into the holder really well and function as a roller should. This will keep the metal edge away from the inside of the guide track. So you won't get as much noise if you have any metal scraping as well. These rollers don't have a bearing so they will squeak as it's plastic on plastic. So we always put a little bit of silicon spray in there so the axles have some lubrication. If you still get any squeaking, you can put a little bit of HHS 2000 just on the axles, but don't get any on the Nyla felt fabric or that will cause sticking in the tracks. The left hand roller is completely fine. It obviously favors the right hand track, which is normal. So we will leave this one alone. 
probably should have put a little bit of silicon spray in that one, but I'm doing the video, so probably forgot. I'll do that tomorrow, maybe. Okay, so the door hasn't lined up with the line we put on the wall just yet. So we're going to have to wiggle this curtain over to the left about 15 to 20 millimeters until the track lines up with our mark and then we can get to fixing the track back onto the wall. That's ended up exactly where we want them, so that's great. Now we'll go through and put each bolt in the track cleats by hand and then we'll go through and tighten them up with the impact driver. Now just do one more final check that the tracks line up with the mark we put on the wall earlier and then grab your impact driver if you are lucky to have one or a cordless drill, spanner or socket set and go ahead and tighten up those bolts into the wall. Now before we tighten the other track it's best to close the door almost completely because we want to get the gapping just right. We don't want it too tight. If we have the door open, it's easy to put the tracks in too tightly. So with the door up just a little way from the floor, we can get the maximum gap without going too far in or out, which is about five to 10 millimeters of play. You don't want too much slapping around left to right in the track but you also don't want it to be too tight and jam when it gets to the bottom and wear out those rollers any quicker than you need to. So here we're just checking the left to right play in the tracks. We don't want any more than about 10 millimeters of play. You can have a little bit more or less, but you don't want it too tight and you don't want it too much. Uh, otherwise it will slap around in the tracks as it's closing. But as long as the door closes by hand, nice and smoothly and doesn't jam, the gap is fine. You'll probably find most doors have a sticker that says do not oil or grease. So we're not oiling or greasing in the tracks. So we're using a silicon based spray. It's actually silicon spray. This will prevent any rust in the tracks and corrosion, especially if you live near the ocean or water or a very wet area, the tracks will rust out and get a lot of friction and damage your Nyla felt on the edge of the door. So we've been using this for 15 years and it's protected all the tracks and it hasn't caused any damage to the Nyla felt and it's not an oil or grease based spray, so very safe. Once the solvent evaporates, it just leaves a very fine dry film of silicon which adds a lot less friction to the tracks and prevents rust and corrosion. The reason your door tracks will get rusted is because going up and down every day the Nyla felt eventually wears off the galvanized coating inside the track which you can probably see on this one. And remember don't ever use WD-40 or anything else marketed for garage doors. This will gunk up and grease up your Nyla felt edging and turn it black and sticky and your door will not run very good at all. As you can see, this door is almost 20 years old and the fabric is almost brand new. The curtain lines up perfectly, so we've got the tracks in the great position. And now for the moment of truth, is it going to be quiet? Yes, we've done it. We have a quiet door. The neighbors are going to be ecstatic. An 
Another great reason to get your door serviced is so people don't know when you're coming or going. This could leave your home quite vulnerable as a noisy door is basically an alarm system that alerts people when you've just left. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe.